Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to use dynamic filtering to load combo boxes faster in your Microsoft Access databases. This is a great tip for loading lots of data over a network or especially an internet connection. Today's question comes from Cassidy in Manchester, New Hampshire, one of my platinum members. Cassidy says, I built my company's access database about 10 years ago when we only had a few hundred customers and a couple of users. Now we have well over 100,000 customers and around 10 to 15 people in the system at the same time. Some of our forms, especially the ones with customer combo boxes, are getting really slow to load. Do you have any tips to speed this up without redesigning the whole database? Well, yes, Cassidy, this is a problem you're gonna run into. If you've got forms with combo boxes in them and you're loading up all those records in that combo box, that's a lot of network traffic. And even if you upgrade to like SQL Server, you're still dealing with all that network traffic coming down over the line to load that combo box. So the trick is to only load the data that you need into the combo box. It's like in Spaceballs when Lone Star says, bring only what you need to survive, right? It's my industrial strength hair dryer, and I can't live without it. <laughs> so let's see how that works. So here's a copy of my tech help free template. You can grab a copy of this off my website if you want. You'll find links down below. And in here, we got customers, right? And in our order form, this combo box where you pick the customer loads all of the customers, right? Now, it's not a problem for me because I'm the only user in this database, and it's local on my hard drive, and there's, what, 33 customers in it? No big deal. But if this was sitting on a network and there was 300,000 customers in my table, this would definitely take a while to load. So what you want to do is only preload what you need in there. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. First of all, what I like to do is if there's already a customer for this record, just load that record into the combo box, right? There's no reason to load them all if you already picked a customer. And then what we'll do is we'll add a filter box before this one that lets you whittle down that set of data. For example, you could use last name. You might have 100,000 customers, but amongst those, you might only have, you know, a few tens of thousands of last names. And again, depending on your data, you could whittle it down even more with, you know, uh, uh, do a special set that's got like, you know, A through M and then N through Z and break it down that way. However you want to break it down, this technique works for a, a variety of different sources. Um, you just got to pick what works best for you. You could break it down by zip code first, you know, type in the zip code and filter the box. I'm going to show you how to do it with last name and then last name will filter it and just show those people with that last name. All right. But you could, again, you can, you can use the same technique for all kinds of different filtering methods. Before we begin though, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you've never done any VBA programming before, don't worry. It's not hard. It's not rocket surgery. Go watch this video. It's my intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Go watch this video on aggregate queries. This is where we can generate a query that gives us just a, a unique list of last names. And also optionally, go watch this video on cascading combo boxes, which is kind of what we're going to be doing today, right? This will let you pick a state and then it'll show you just the cities from that state. Same kind of technique we're going to be doing today. Today's a little more advanced though. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure we got some people in here that have the same last names. So I'm gonna take my last name, Rost, and we're gonna make a Deanna Rost, and a William Rost, and a Tasha Rost, and a Benjamin Rost. And let's do Kirk, too. We'll do James Kirk, we got Jean-Luc Kirk, we got uh, Reginald Kirk, and uh, Julian Kirk. All right, so we got some different last names in here, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an aggregate query to give a listing of just the unique last names. So let's go to create and then query design and I'm going to bring in the customer table. And from the customer table, we only need the last name field. We're gonna hit the totals button to make this an aggregate query and make sure it's set to group by. Okay, save this as my last name queue or customer last name queue if you want to, that's fine. All right, and when I run this, you can see I've, I've got a list of only unique last names. There's only one Kirk and there's only one Ross right there, even though we know there's duplicates, right? Now we'll use this to create a last name filter box on our order form. All right, I'm gonna shrink that back up again. 
Oh, wrong one. Let's go into here. Go into here. Okay, here's my order form. Design view. I'm going to slide this stuff down. Slide this down. And right up here, we're going to add a combo box that's got just those last names in it. All right, so we're going to go combo box. Drop it right. Meow. All right, get the values from a table or query. We're going to queries and that last name queue that we just created. All right, next. There's only one field in it. That's fine. Next. Sort it by last name. Next. That's what it's going to look like. Sure, fine, great. Next. We're going to remember that value for later use. We're not actually storing the last name in the order at all. This is just for display and to help us whittle down the other combo box, right? Next. What label would you like? How about last name filter, maybe? Whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Okay, and let's make this. We'll format paint over that so it looks the same. And that's good enough. We'll, we'll pretty it up later. Okay. Now, this guy, I'm going to make it green just so the user visually knows. It's, it's a little bit different. One of these things is not like the others. Write that thing. Um, let's change this guy's name. Give it a good name. And we don't want combo 15. Let's call it the last name combo. Okay. Save it. And then we can slide this guy back up if we want. All right. So right now, let's see what we got. Save this, close it, open it back up again. All right. We got a list of just the unique last names. All right. Beautiful. Now, what we want to do is when... This form loads up. We don't want to load all 300,000 customers in here. Okay. So we're going to control what happens when this thing loads up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of its row source. I'm going to cut that out so I can take a peek at it real quick. Cut it out, snip it out, get it out of there. Just delete it. All right. And let's put it over in notepad. Let me bring over my notepad. Love my notepad. There we go. Now, this guy, first of all, is pulling off of a query, customer LFQ. And all that does is it, it puts last name and first name together in the same field. But we're going to bypass that query altogether. So we're going to get rid of this and just make it customer ID. And we're not going to use LF. We're going to use last name and quote, comma, quote like that and first name, which is basically what that customer LFQ does. But I did the query for the beginners, right? To teach you know to teach them how to use a query to put two fields together. We're a little more advanced now, so we don't need to use a query for something simple like that. Okay, so this is just now from customer T, and then it's going to be order by, and then last name comma first name. Okay, so that's our new row source, but we're not going to put it in the combo box. I don't want to load all those records up. We're just saving this for now. Let's just set it aside. I'm just going to move it over here to the side. Okay, so we got it. We got it handy. So now if I save this, close it, open it back up again. Oh my God, I lost it. There's nothing in here. That's okay. Relax. Now, if this record already has a customer in it, we're just going to load just that customer in this combo box. All right, just follow, just follow with me here. Where are we going to do that? We're going to do that in the onload event. All right, go to the forms properties, go to events, go to onload or on open either one. I like onload dot 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 open it up in our code builder okay so here we're going to say if is null customer id then we don't have a customer so combo uh it's customer combo sorry customer combo is the name of that box dot row source equals blank no no list nobody shows up otherwise we have a customer Okay, let's load just that customer in this combo box. Much, much faster. So customer, I can't type today. Customer combo dot row source equals, guess what? I had you save it over here. Eh, this guy, right? Let's select all that. In fact, we don't need the order by on the end either. So just grab this because we're not, you don't sort one record, right? Drop that in there, but be careful because these are quotes inside of a string. So what do they got to become? double quotes do that okay so select customer id and then last name comma first name that's our second field right for the second column and then we're going to say from customer t where the customer id equals the customer id customer id 
on the form. Okay, you with me? All right, save it, debug, compile once in a while. Close it, close it, close it, open it. All right, so I got that customer in there. Okay, so drop that down. I see just that, cut. that's beautiful. Let's go to somebody else, make sure it's working. Let's go to Jimmy Kirk. He's got an order, there he is, he shows up. But see now, the point at this point is, you might be going, why do we bother doing that? Because now, when you load up that order, it doesn't load all 300,000 customers into that combo box, just the one you picked. Okay, just the person whose order that is gets loaded into that combo box, saving you a whole lot of time. All right? But how do you change it? How do you make how do you change that guy? Well, that's where this guy comes into play. What we're going to do next is we're going to say, "Okay, if you want to change this guy, you got to filter you got to use this thing first. And filter it down to, you know, green leaf." And then this will control what loads into here. We'll load just the green leaves in there. If I change this to Rost, we'll load just the Rosts in this box and you can pick one. And we'll do all of that in the next class. I'm going to say, I'd say tomorrow, but today's Thursday, the 20th. So tomorrow is going to be Friday, which is Quick Queries Friday. We always do Quick Queries on Friday. So the next video is going to be uh, the 24th on Monday, which is Monday, November 24th, 2025. So tune in then tune in monday i'm not going to change the whole slide people but if you're a member you can watch it right now because i'm going to record it right now it's one of the benefits of being a member and of course if you're watching this at any point in the future well look down below for the link and you'll probably find the link to part two down there so that's going to be your tech help video for today i hope you learned something live long and prosper my friends i'll see you monday for part two if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.